Welcome back to DNA Structure and Metabolism on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Togoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for future videos and notifications. All right. Depending on your biochemistry course or cell and molecular biology, genetic cell bio, whatnot, you've probably seen a figure that looks something like this. Now, we know two things. Number one, we know that if you take DNA of any kind, you can electrophoresis it in agarose medium, and the DNA, usually depending on, we normally consider its size or its number of base pairs, it will migrate a certain distance down the gel. All right, we hopefully know that larger DNA does not move as far and smaller DNA moves much farther. That really is more of Newton's laws. If you're smaller, you can a force applied can accelerate you more. If you're larger, it takes more force to accelerate you the same amount. That's just Newton's laws, all right? Um, but there's another factor that can play a role in migration down a gel. So suppose I have two DNA strands. They are exactly the same DNA strand. Same sequence, same everything. They're, they're identical, except in one way. One of them is, is a relaxed DNA strand, and the other is highly supercoiled. All right, they're the same DNA strand, however, they have different levels of supercoiling. Meaning, if you were to actually look at their structure, in terms of their three-dimensional structure, that is, they would look different. So, in other words, what we're saying is their topology is different. What is topology? When you look at topology, you're saying, okay, I'm looking at this area of the land, it's flat. If I look at this area, it's topology, it's a hill. This area is a mountain, okay? Their topology is different. Now, when I talk about two DNA strands, identical in sequence, exactly the same, but they have different three-dimensional structures due to different levels of supercoiling, we will call them topological isomers or topoisomers. And we hopefully know by now that the variation in, uh, in their supercoiling can be altered by topoisomerases and so on and so forth. The point is, if you have different levels of supercoiling, then that DNA strand of the same size will migrate a different distance through the medium, in which case in DNA it's agarose. So what we're going to assume here in this first column right here, the well is up here on the top. Okay. So in other words, it seems that this band right here, which is relaxed DNA, did not migrate very far, but this other one down here that's highly supercoiled migrated much, much further. So why is it that relaxed DNA doesn't go very far, but highly supercoiled DNA goes much further? Well, an analogy to think about is a piece of paper, a notebook paper. And I think we all, even if we haven't actually done this ourselves, we hopefully can reason through this. We probably have seen it before. These are the same pieces of paper. In this case, this is just the notebook paper that you would write on, okay? It's, it's you know, just flat. You pulled it out of your notebook. It's You're writing your notes on it. But then at the end of the semester, you take that same piece of paper and you crumple it up, right? So this is the same sheet, but they're topoisomers of each other. This one is completely flat. It's relaxed, but this one has been crumpled up into a ball. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. If you were to take the sheet of paper right here on the top, that before it's crumpled, and hold it up, say, five feet off the ground, and drop it, does it fall very quickly? And the answer is no, and that's partly because it has air resistance, or what we would call medium resistance. It's, there's resistance from the medium through which it's falling that's causing it to be, its fall is decelerated. Now, take the same piece of paper and crumple it up, hold it five feet above the ground and drop it. What happens? It falls much faster, okay? Its velocity, or what we would call in the case of um, DNA moving through agarose, its sedimentation rate is much faster. Okay, So because you have, the, it's the same DNA molecule, same number of base pairs, but because the relaxed DNA has a lot of surface area through which the medium can exert a force on it, it doesn't migrate as far. It's slowed down due to drag through the medium. However, you could think of the highly supercoiled DNA like this crumpled up ball of paper. The highly supercoiled DNA is more condensed due to the supercoiling, and it's more aerodynamic, and so it experiences much less drag force through the medium, which is agarose. And so as a result, it migrates much further. When you think of a relaxed DNA molecule, you should think of a molecule that looks something like this, okay? However, 
either something like this or something like this is highly supercoiled. So this purple DNA strand, and by the way, all of these are the exact same DNA strand, circular DNA, but the same DNA strand. This purple one, the relaxed one, is not going to migrate very far. However, if I were to look at any of these supercoiled ones, they're going to go much further. They're going to be more like this band down here. And that's because the way you can think about it is when it's supercoiled, it's more aerodynamic because it's more crumpled up, so to speak. Okay. So one thing you can do that we'll talk about in the next video is you can actually use ethidium bromide, which is a very dangerous molecule, but in any case you can use it to determine sort of a, a qualitative uh, degree of supercoiling in a DNA strand. Okay, so hopefully this made a little bit of sense. We use this analogy with the paper, but that's sort of why the supercoiled DNA travels much farther through the agarose gel. And if you were to have other bands, so let's look at these right here. Let's say this is the relaxed, let's look at this one, the three's a little bit better. If you have the relaxed DNA, it's going to show up right here, okay? Now if you have, say if I look at this band right here versus this one versus the one at the very bottom, what we actually have is going from relaxed down a higher degree of supercoiling. Because remember, it's not just we're either relaxed or supercoiled, we have gray areas in between. We have a smaller degree of supercoiling, a moderate degree, or a very high degree of supercoiling. We'll consider the relaxed DNA, there's no supercoiling. But if we look maybe at this band right here, that's a small amount of supercoiling. Down here is a moderate amount of supercoiling, and down at the very bottom is a really high amount of supercoiling. And so you can look at the, the migration of the same DNA molecule through an agarose gel and sort of get a qualitative uh, measure of how much it was supercoiled. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense and we'll cover ethidium bromide in the next video. Thanks for watching this. Make sure to like and subscribe.